Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I apologize in advance. I'm currently in the process of losing my voice, which is a really bad time for a preacher to lose his voice, but I'll give you what I've got. Today we celebrate and recognize in our church the ending of the year. We begin to hear readings that point us towards a reality beyond what we can imagine here. But in hearing them, there's an element of challenge and I suppose a worrisome tone. A tone that, frankly, reading through the news, we have echoed and reverberated throughout our world and certainly in our country. We see wildfires in California. We continue to hear disturbing reports of clergy abuse committed by trusted pastors in the Catholic Church. We are following in the news the mass migration of people who can no longer stay in their homes because of fear. We have just witnessed over the course of the past two weeks tragic shootings in both the Tree of Life Synagogue and the Borderline Bar and Grill. Just this past week, the FBI came out with its report on hate crimes. It said three of five hate crimes target a person because of race or ethnicity. One in five target a person because of their religion. Over the course of the past year, there has been a 37% increase in anti-Semitic hate crimes. But it's not just our world and our country and our community. We see it in our own lives as well. With Thanksgiving right around the corner, we are all too aware of the imperfect nature of our lives. We are all too aware of the ways in which our own personal lives fall short whether it be addictions to alcohol, drugs, pornography, materialism, or the loneliness and isolation we feel from an increasingly polarized world, our faith in what's possible is often challenged in very real ways. With all that is swirling in the broader world and the, our personal lives, there are a few questions, I suppose, that arise. 
Where do we find hope? How do we witness to that hope on a daily basis? Admittedly, it's easier in many ways to simply succumb, to throw our hands up in exasperation, to grow cynical, to say, what's the use? Over the past two weeks, I've been a part of a series of listening sessions for students, staff, and faculty conducted by the university to hear how people are dealing with the abuse crisis here within Notre Dame. Truthfully, I did not know what to expect. I remember the weekend before we were to begin feeling quite nervous, worried about how we might handle a difficult situation or comfort someone in their pain. While there were plenty of good questions and comments, what I witnessed over the course of the past two weeks were people who so deeply cared that they embraced the pain and sought to speak truth regardless of the challenge or obstacle. A truth that serves as the heartbeat in many ways of our readings today. Good, my brothers and sisters, overcomes evil in the end. All is swallowed up in Christ's victory over sin and death. We hear this heartbeat echoed in these passages. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like stars forever. And then in our gospel, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. There is no question about what is coming next. The glory of God will overcome pain, hate, and scandal that our world produces. The wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. The Son of Man will be seen coming with great power and glory. Instead of living lives of cynicism and exasperation, what if we sought to live lives that were wise in the way of the Lord? Ways that fed the hungry, gave drink to the thirsty, sheltered the homeless, visited the sick, visited prisoners, buried the dead, gave alms to the poor. This type of wisdom, this type of wisdom is given to us by the church in the form of the corporal works of mercy. This timeless wisdom says to us, when things are challenging, when they are difficult, go back to your root, go back to your core of who we are as a Christian society and community. These are the things that we uphold above all else. My question would be, is if the FBI came out and did a study of Catholics, would we find a 37% increase in the corporal works of mercy? Would we see people who facing these challenges that we encounter on a daily basis, would we double down on what we believe to be absolutely essential for who we are and what we are and the hope that we carry? Dorothy Day, the co-founder of The Catholic Worker, once said the following. We are not expecting utopia here on this earth. But God meant things to be much easier than we have made them. A man has a natural right to food, clothing, and shelter. A certain amount of goods is necessary to lead a good life. A family needs to work as well as bread. Property is proper to man. We must keep repeating these things. Eternal life begins now. Eternal life begins now through our practices, through our belief, through what we accept and what we reject. Eternal life begins now. In our gospel, Jesus implores us to learn a lesson from the fig tree. But short of eating the occasional fig, that's a lesson that really doesn't hit home for me. 
So I thought I would come up with a different, more case-sensitive, communally operative analogy. On campus, there is a tradition that on the first real day of snowfall, there is a campus-wide snowball fight that occurs. There is no formal announcement on behalf of the university that says, today is the day. Today is the day that we are going to go out and hurl snowballs at one another. But I assure you, people know. So this past Thursday, as you may recall, one to three inches of snow fell on this beautiful campus of ours. And at midnight, campus left their residence halls. They left the comfort of their warmth. And in that moment, proceeded to hurl snowballs at one another. Now, was I there? Absolutely not. It is far too dangerous for a slow-moving priest like myself to go out into that environment where it is completely lawful to target someone such as me. But I heard about it the next day. All I'm saying is that in each culture, we have a method of reading the signs of the times. We know when things are good. We know when things are bad. No matter the challenge we face, no matter the cross we carry, may we never forget that all is swallowed up in God's victory. That God ultimately reigns in the end. And from that, we proceed forward with confidence. From that, we willingly embrace those who are in pain. From that, we willingly give of ourselves. From that, ultimately, eternal life begins. There's a passage in Scripture that I am fond of. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. My brothers and sisters, we gather this strength with a hope not in ourselves. We don't come here with the expectation that we ourselves have the ability to bring about the kingdom of God. We come here out of a strong desire to be a part of that, to allow God to move through us, to allow our hands to be Christ's hands, to allow our hearts to be Christ's heart, to allow all that we do to be wrapped up in what is greater and the glory of God. What we ultimately rely upon so that we may one day stand before our Lord is that we place our hope squarely on the radical and transformative love of God. My brothers and sisters, may we live both now and always as women and men who are wise in the ways of the Lord.